want to bring in Kevin Hines. He's a suicide prevention speaker. He himself survived a jump of the Golden Gate Bridge. He joins us from Atlanta. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know it's been a long day for you. You actually have a unique perspective on this case, and you don't even feel that it was a homicide, uh, but it was a suicide. Can you take us through your thought process? You know, it was implied today in one of the previous shows that I didn't have value for human life by one of the pundits. And I, I would say, if you ask my family and friends, they would say completely the opposite. Next to that, I want to say something very important about, about empathy for the Roy family. Um, I look at this now in thinking and reflecting. If my own father uh, had this happen to me, I guarantee you he would fight it and fight the person who did this to the full extent of the law. That's just the way he is. And so I empathize with the Roy situation 150 percent. Um, and I would think, but here's, what I, here's my statement about empathy. I would wish, after my passing, if I had the power to look down uh, from the, whatever heaven you think exists, I would want my dad to forgive someone like Michelle Carter. Full forgiveness for her actions. I don't believe she committed homicide. I do believe she was very ill and she was in desperate need of, of help. And the idea that the, the judge says that her mental health didn't play a role, the idea that any prosecutor says her mental health didn't play a role, I have lived with this bipolar disease for 20 years. It nearly destroyed me, my entire family, all of my friends, and my wife who later, married me later on. Yes, Kevin, it had an effect. Kevin, let me ask you, because you were able to overcome this, and I think this case speaks to the broader issues of people out there who are going through a tough time. And, you know, 17, 18, really difficult years of their life, and the things that were so important to us then are just not now. What did you do to overcome it, and what would your message be so that um, this Conrad Roy did not die in vain? What, what do you have to say? Mr. Jackson, just so you understand, I haven't overcome it. I'm in recovery every day. I have chronic suicidal thoughts, mania, depression, hallucinations, both auditory and visual, on a regular basis. I've learned to manage it through routine. So to the people out there suffering like I do, like Roy did, and like Michelle does, I would say this. When you are in desperate need and you are in horrific pain, because brain pain is more desperate and more painful than any physical pain you can ever imagine. People just don't understand that. And when you're in that pain, instead of turning to thoughts like suicide, instead of turning to actions like attempting, I'm asking you to recognize this. Your thoughts do not have par with your actions, or they don't have to. If everybody acted on their thoughts, people would be in jail for road rage all over the world, right? So Without if, question. if we recognize that our thoughts are separate from our actions, we can stay here in the realization that every and any time I have a suicidal thought, the first thing I do, as I said earlier, is turn to my wife, turn to my father, and turn to my friends and say, I need help now. And we get that help. We get that guidance, and it doesn't mean we have to go necessarily to acute care. Sometimes it means I just need a person to sit next to me, hold right. me, and tell me that I'm loved and cared for and that I am valued because Con Conrad Roy and his family are valuable. They are important. Like his mom said, they do matter. But so does Michelle Carter. Kevin Hines, I love your perspective. Also love your fight. Uh, keep overcoming. Thank you for the powerful message that you sent to so many. And for being here after what was a long day for you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Hey guys, it's been a long day here at CNN. Started out, picked up at 10, got here at 11, uh, did Michaela uh, from Los Angeles on the story with Erica Hill, and now Joey Jackson uh, live. And uh, we talked about the Michelle Carter case all day long and the, and the precedent that it's gonna set between suicide and manslaughter. And I can tell you this, um, I learned a lot today from all the pundits, from the people involved, from the family, the Roy family, the Conrad Roy family, as well as the Carter family. But my point is very simple. Let's be empathetic to everyone in need, not just the perceived victim. Because frankly, Michelle Carter is unwell and she desperately needs help, not prison time. Los Angeles County Jail is the largest mental health facility in the world. It's a jail. It's a place where people are locked up behind bars in inhumane situations, without their medication, without therapy. I'm just saying, let's switch the thought process of suicide and manslaughter and homicide. Let's recognize that every human being matters. And, and to the Roy family, you do matter. 
your son does matter and it's terrible what happened but let's look at this in changing the precedent for how we see this situation and trying to save more lives if you're in crisis right now text cnqr to 741 741 cnqr 741 741 to get a crisis counselor to text back to you straight away and keep you here and if you're thinking of suicide and you don't like text call the national suicide prevention lifeline at 1-800-273-8255 we need you you matter we want you to stay please be here tomorrow